Welcome back to the American College of Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the Frontline Surgeons Voices. With me today is my friend, Dr. Mike Zinner. Dr. Zinner was chair of the Board of Regents, the American College of Surgeons, and here near me in South Florida, serves as the Chief Executive Officer and Medical Director of the Miami Cancer Institute, and also as the Chief of Surgery at Florida International University. Welcome, Mike. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you too, a uh, few miles away, but yet virtual, like many things in life, uh, which brings us to the point of today's interview. So we, we sit here and you and Dave, me and Broward County, which are two of the global hotspots now for this resurgence, this newest wave of, of COVID-19. Uh, I want to chat with you a little bit about how this current wave has impacted operations. Uh, and you can certainly touch upon either your hospital and group practice or, or the uh, university. All right, well, let me, let, me, let me give you a little uh, level setting. So you're right, I'm the CEO and executive medical director of the Cancer Institute, but I also have a responsibility system-wide for the 11 hospitals in the Baptist Health System in South Florida. And so I co-chair one of the policy committees for that. And so we, we have pretty daily updates on where we are. Just as a reference of the 11 hospitals in our system, on July 11th of this year, we had only 72 patients in all 11 hospitals. Yesterday, less than a month later, we had 847. So it's had explosive growth in, uh, in our counties. And it has impacted everything across the board. How many beds are there, just also to put that in context? There are around 1,500 beds in the, in this, in the system. Uh, biggest hospitals are running around 700 beds, but there are multiple other hospitals of intermediate size in the system. So roughly 50% of your bed capacity is now occupied with, with patients from this. So service. we are... are we are admitting on the average of uh, 130 new patients per day in the system, which is the same number we had a year ago pre-vaccine. And 85% of the admissions that are coming in now are unvaccinated individuals. And the age range is also dramatically different. Last year, pre-vaccine, most of the admissions were in the over 65 category. Now it is evenly distributed between 18 year old and uh, 65 and above, uh, all the way across the board. How about the severity of, of illness in the younger patients now versus the older patients last year or now? No question about it that the uh, younger patients are also severely affected and in the ICU. Now it to be honest, it's still early in, in our experience to see whether the mortality has changed. And that probably is a lagging indicator that we'll have to see over the next several weeks. So we're not sure. The other dramatic change is how, what percentage of the patients in, at least in my county, in Dade County, are now Delta compared to what they were a month ago. So a month ago, it was uh, one or 2% of the total tested uh, as of today, it's 65% uh, of the total tested. Well, speaking of, of vaccinated, and you mentioned 85% were not vaccinated. How about the other 15% that are breakthrough uh, patients? What's their level of illness compared to the unvaccinated patients? Not nearly as severe. They are admitted because of oxygen requirements, but very few of them have been uh, admitted to the ICU but they do require oxygen. And as you know, if you wanna use a monoclonal, that has to be in the setting of an infusion that requires at least a, almost a hospital setting to be able to do that. So within the hospital setting, obviously there's a lot of personnel involved in taking care of these patients. Have you had staff, either uh, physician surgeon staff or, or other staff out because they've had breakthrough infections or because they're unvaccinated and got infected? So we don't really know who's unvaccinated. Uh, we did a survey. Uh, of the survey, we had about an 80% response rate system-wide. Of that, 60% admitted to being vaccinated. About 20% said non-vaccinated or vaccinated outside, and 20% would not answer. So we have to speculate that we've got an 
overall staff of, and that's about 25,000 total employees of about 60% vaccinated. We have not had any physicians out with uh, breakthrough COVID, and we believe most of the physicians, uh, medical staff is vaccinated. But we have had a lot of non-medical staff that have been out we have the same number of employees out today that we had a year ago, uh, again, pre-vaccine, post-vaccine, uh, which is still very worrisome. And that, that problem of uh, open positions, uh, it really does affect our throughput. Yeah, that, that's the other area I'd, I'd like to delve into is, is there seems to be a, a shortage of support personnel, nursing and other um, nationwide certainly here in, in, in Florida. Um, have you had to change your operations as we were doing uh, more than a year ago, 15 months ago, either limiting to patients with cancer, emergencies, gone on diversion? What, what, what's the impact been on, on the day-to-day -day operations? Like everyone in the system, we've had to open up uh, parts of the hospital that uh, ordinarily would not be patient care areas uh, because of the COVID crush. But we are, in terms of vacancies, we're running an across the board 16% vacancy rate just at my cancer institute. How does that translate? That translates into people not getting to chemo infusion as fast, not getting to imaging as fast, not getting to some of the radiation therapy as fast. So far, most of the big cancer cases have been able to be done, and we haven't had to delay many, but the non cancer cases are absolutely being delayed uh, because of hospitalization. Have you had situations where the hospital has gone on diversion where you just can't accept any more patients if somebody calls 911? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But, we, but not only do we have staffing shortages, but now we've got oxygen shortages also. Most of the hospitals in the system are used to having multiple days, oxygen levels or oxygen capacity, and now we're going day by day, almost all of that is a result of the need for high flow oxygen for both the inpatients as well as the ICU patients. So are there any mitigation strategies you, you can take? Because here we are in South Florida, all we need is something like a tropical storm warning or hurricane warning, and suddenly we don't have trucks bringing us oxygen. We are very concerned about that, as uh, everyone in South Florida is. The contingency is dealing with our suppliers and making them aware. But right now, I think it's a shortage across the entire South Florida region. Yeah, I, I absolutely concur with you. And, and uh, it, it's a factor we have here in South Florida. Certain other parts of the country have it too, but the majority of the country doesn't have this issue um, of the potential of a tropical storm or hurricane suddenly cutting off a supply chain and, and already being precariously balanced. So it, it, it's indeed a challenge. You already mentioned that there's no vaccine mandate at, at your system. And I know there are other systems, both here in South Florida and throughout the country, where there are vaccine mandates of, of sorts. What, what are other policies? What, what are some other safety policies? We've all changed things like numbers of visits and using virtual visits and things like that. What, what, what is your current um, we've, policy? We've done, all, we've done all of that also with respect to visitors, and we've also changed our, our testing. We, we were originally testing preoperatively or pre-procedure uh, every uh, aerosol-generating uh, procedure uh, getting tested, pre-tested before 72 hours. And then about a month or six weeks ago, I chaired the, the policy committee that said, look, it appears that with, uh, with the vaccine, we could relax that. Within the last few days, we've gone back to every AGP is now being tested uh, again, which stresses the system because we don't have all the infrastructure in place that we took down when we thought we were in a better place. With respect to vaccine mandates, it is under... I wouldn't, not only daily, it's almost under hourly discussion because several uh, other systems in our area here at Dade County, Miami, uh, have just within the last couple of days announced that they're going to mandates. I suspect we will be in that position very shortly. Sounds like you're going to have to take care of 40% of your staff if, if your guesstimate is, is, is correct. Um, I assume you have the capacity to do that if, if uh, the policy changes. 
Well, that's one of the that's one of the very difficult areas. We don't have the capacity to do that, nor does anybody have the capacity to do that. And so we're relying on some outsourcing for that, and we're under discussions with people to do that. Yeah, it's it's definitely evolving, as you say, by the hour, uh, for sure. The situation keeps changing, and it, it's not just us in South Florida. There are other areas of the country uh, where they're having similar crises. Mask mandates have been a hotly debated topic, and I'd just like to hear your uh, institution's policy in the inpatient, outpatient settings for masks. 100%. We've had a mask mandate since... February of last year that has not changed. We have a screening process for everyone walking through the door, whether they're employees or patients or the single visitor for a new patient. We have a screening process for them in addition to getting a new mask every day. As we we wrap up, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on any other measures that you've taken at your hospital to try and handle the, the crush of patients, as well as any other parting comments which you might have for us. In the panoply of things that we've had to change, we have uh, hospitals with single rooms almost throughout the system. We are now going to patient cohorting. You know, patient cohorting is not something you would want to do ordinarily, but when your system is so stressed with volume, you really don't have any choice. And then there's a whole bunch of policies you need to put in place of who gets to cohort and who doesn't get to cohort. So we're going through that literally on a daily basis. Let me just sort of say in summary, COVID has exploded in our county and it is not only hurting the cancer patients, it's hurting every patient that needs to come to our hospital. And it's related to the unvaccinated patients on the outside. So in light of your comment about the unvaccinated patients, what is your message to both the listeners and viewers of, of uh, our recording today, as well as the general community about vaccines? I think the evidence is clear. Vaccines make a difference and they need to be emphasized to our public and to our profession. It is hard for me to believe that someone could enter the medical profession as a career and not understand why they need to be vaccinated, particularly if they're patient facing parts of the community. Well, thanks very much for your time and your insights. And I hope that we soon see an end or at least a decrease to this surge. At present just seems to be increasing by the day. So I hope we get to the other side of it soon and look forward to seeing you in person one of these days. Me too. Thank you, Steve.